And we're live with episode number eight for WP Bosses. We've got Olga Summerhays with us uh, this week, and we'll be getting to know her a little bit better. Um, let it, let me know in the comments if you prefer my hat backwards uh, or round the right way. That would mean a lot to me. Um, let's go around and introduce everyone. Paul, who are you? Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Paul Oxford from Gold Coast Business Websites and WP Genie. And uh, I'm a front-end uh, WordPress developer slash uh, website maintenance uh, person, uh, hence the WP Genie. So, oh, thanks. Excellent. Tracy, who are you? Um, Tracy Kim from Get Web Creative. I'm also a front-end WordPress developer based on the Gold Coast. And that's about it. Hello. Cool. Hi. Nick, who are you? I am Nick from Positive Business Online, and I am a side-end developer uh, working with WordPress. So just because I do things a little bit differently than from the front and from the back, I come in from the side to WordPress. So uh, I am up in the hinterland and live here with chickens and goats and cats and WordPress. So that's me. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Um, Olga, yeah. who are you? Yeah, hi guys. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for having me today. Uh, so I'm Olga Summerhays, and I'm a web designer at Infinite Imagination Web Design. I'm based in Central Queensland in Gladstone, Lo num like lovely little town, very small population, but um, nice, very nice people, guys. Really nice. And um, I build web uh, the uh, websites predominantly with WordPress. And you can find me at uh, Facebook slash Infinite Imagination. Excellent. And I'm Roby Lawrence, uh, your local bearded friend. Uh, you can find me at beardedfriend.com. And that's about it. Um, as we usually do, we're going to start off with uh, meetup news. Tracy, do you have some meetup news for us today? Yeah, there's, there's actually a lot happening in the next week or two. Um, so our Gold Coast one is happening this week, tomorrow night at Ferry Road Tavern as per usual, and we're doing a WordPress show and tell uh, where people can kind of get up and tell us about their websites and get some help if they need it or show off what they've done. So that should be good. Very excellent idea. Yeah. It was yours, wasn't it, Roby? <laughs> it was, yeah. <laughs> um, and Roby's got some great sites to show and tell too, which would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, Monday, uh, the Central Sydney meetup on monetizing WordPress. And we have Wednesday is Toowoomba is having a meetup and they're just having a general kind of hang out and learn stuff about WordPress. Um, uh, Sunshine Coast, uh, next Wednesday the 2nd. And they're moving to a new location, so that should be fun. And they're, uh, they've got James Banks talking at, at their meetup this month. And Ringwood, also next Wednesday. Um, don't have a topic on their meetup page. Uh, and then the following Sunday, uh, Perth having their meetup, and John Mather will be showing people how to build a WordPress theme, theme from scratch with Pine Grow. That's something I'd really like to go and see. Now, John Mather mm -hmm. is. Um, a Beaver Builder developer. He's a, he's oh, does a, cool. an add-on to Beaver Builder, so that should be really interesting if you're in Perth. I want to go to that one too. Do you, mm. want, to, do you want to hitch a ride together? We can go down. Yeah. No worries. Surely we can organise someone to Facebook stream it. Facebook Live. Yeah. That'd be it. If they're listening, we want to be in. <laughs> yep. Hit us up. All right, and. Monday the 7th, I missed that one, that was um, Parramatta 
Uh, they don't have a topic on their meetup page either. And WordPress Adelaide uh, on Tuesday the 8th. Now they don't, oh yes, WordPress 101 session for people new to WordPress. Um, that's all that's written on, on their page. And WordPress Brisbane on Thursday, November the 10th. Uh, not sure what the topic is there either. Guys, update your meetup pages. Um, well, just turn up and Thursday, find out. Thursday the 10th, um, also North Sydney having meetup. And once yep, again, no topic. So that is it. That's a lot for the next two weeks of WordPress meetups. Yeah, it is. Um, to find out more, go to wpbosses.com.au and there you'll find the links to all of the upcoming meetup pages. Or you can just, just a note on that. Yeah. And Google WordPress. If you are interested in, if you are interested in seeing James Banks, uh, but you're not from the Sunshine Coast, he'll be presenting at the Gold Coast meetup next month in November. So just a side note there. Awesome. Um, Paul. Uh, Mr. Genie, do you have any any maintenance or health tips for us? Of course, of course, absolutely. Um, stay safe, stay vigilant, and uh, we all know that uh, what happened over the weekend. Well, actually, what started on Friday morning, um, the uh, the massive DDoS attack that uh, pretty much took down a lot of notable sites like Twitter and. Um, eBay, or uh, PayPal, and then um, you know a few other big name sort of websites that uh, did go down uh, due to a DDoS attack, uh, or, or also known as a distributed uh, denial of service attack, um, which basically means that uh, there's a lot of uh, requests coming into the website. It's like a bottleneck type thing. There's, there's the bottleneck, you know. So a lot of things are coming in, and it, and it's trying to squeeze through. Um, so that's the idea of a DDoS. You try and uh, uh, slam it with as many requests or as many uh, visits as possible to try and overload the resources of the of the service, and that's uh, and we actually saw a historical uh, DDoS attack on the weekend. It was it was immense. I don't know if you saw any news about it or the heat maps and stuff. It was huge. It was massive. It was like we haven't seen anything like this before on this scale. So, um, so what's my tip out of this? Uh, well, I, you know, um, things happen, um, and you just have to be a little bit vigilant. And um, I guess use services like uh, you know Cloudflare, um, which will, you know, they've got a pretty good system to allow, um, well, to basically block that sort of thing from happening, um, and. Uh, yeah, and basically just just keep aware of uh, your traffic, and um, uh, you know you'll probably have clients. Um, I, ha I have clients that tell me, you know, that their clients are finding their websites are you know slow loading and all this sort of stuff. So, um, so yeah, listen to your cl uh, your customers and um, and yeah, sort of be, be really vigilant and look at your resources, look at your systems. Uh, look at your uh, your hosting. Uh, it could be rubbish. It's, it could be time to move up to a uh, a better system. Um, but yeah, always always be uh, be on the on the on the alert. So I, I hope that helps. I mean, was that just a waffle, or did that actually help somebody? Maybe that was a good waffle. I like waffles. No waffles. waffles yeah. That was a good, that was a good uh, maintenance waffle. Thank you strawberry, for that, Paul. Strawberry cream on top. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, Mr. Sidend Developer, um, do you have any business tips for us? Uh, well, the first thing I must apologise for um, all of the noise in the background as my uh, kids were being rounded up and shot out of the house at a uh, great rate of knots, uh, but now we're almost here right. <laughs> so um, the, the business tip, uh, in fact it's good that Paul talked about the uh, attacks on the weekend, I had not actually heard of it, so I must have had my head in the sand or up the mountain this weekend because it was off my radar. Uh, but what was on the radar this week is I had a call today from a client and he's, his site, well, actually a client who's got a client and it's his client's site that had been attacked 
three times in the past month that have been cleaned up, they've gone back to someone else to fix up the latest hack. They couldn't find the files in there that were hacked and that were problematic. Um, so just look at some options as to whether they actually pay the money to get the whole thing cleaned up and send it through, or build a new site, or just quickly uh, grab all the content out of it, put it into a um, just a standard sort of theme there, just to try it up. Now the reason why this is important is the the guy runs an AdWords campaign for his business, and he gets virtually a hundred percent of his business through this AdWords campaign. So um, while the site was hacked, he had uh, AdWords running, going to the site, and there were no conversions, absolutely nothing coming through on the site. So this guy's income had gone from something that was you know, reasonable to uh, zero uh, in the space of, I think it was about three weeks. Uh, so he's panicking at the moment because uh, there's nothing coming in the door. He's got a site there that is hacked. He um, hasn't, uh, because he's been losing out all this money, he hasn't got the resources to get, to, uh, get a whole new site built up again. At his wits end because he doesn't know what's wrong with it. He's taken it through to a couple of developers who haven't been able to uh, fix it. Maybe he needs a uh, sideways developer to hop in and sort of see how the uh, the uh, malware slipped in somehow. But um, but the important thing is is that he he's done nothing with the site in terms of the uh, security of it. He's just uh, had it put up. He's um, uh, and they've just got all of the standard WordPress defaults in there. You know, admin for username. WP underscore for the table, uh, you know, prefix, um, and there's actually not much there. So he's in a compromised position. The cost of not actually securing your website properly is it could cost you your business because this guy's got no income coming in. And so, you know, for, for the cost of, you know, a few hundred dollars just to get it sorted out at the beginning or, or, or even now, um, if you've got a site that hasn't had a security audit and it needs to uh, get it just for peace of mind, particularly if you're relying on it for income, just get it um, audited uh, just to make sure you don't have these issues here. Um, I run a uh, dedicated server and we got slammed on the weekend as well. That's probably why I didn't hear about your one, Paul. Um, but yeah, we got absolutely hammered. It took our servers offline uh, probably about six or seven times. Uh, the good thing was, was that no intrusions came through. Um, the, the mod security was working and uh, the server rebooted. Uh, it, was, it was about that six or seven times and it was down for no more than uh, two minutes at a time. Uh, all the sites we had on there, 100% secure, no intrusions, nothing. So our server's mod security is uh, obviously working well. I won't say it's awesome because that's inviting disaster, but uh, it was working well. Uh, and all of the sites on there, interesting enough, are all uh, secured as well, so that they're hardened, they're secured, and uh, that there is, um, uh, to date, much wood, um, we've, we've had no intrusions on anything on our server, just because we've got good practice in terms of security. But the, um, but the very basic thing you can do is to ensure that you install a plugin like WordPress for security, turn it on, get the active monitoring going, so at least if you've got any issues that um, you'll get an email so you're aware of them, and then you can sort it out before the uh, horse is bolted. So there you go, just security, uh, it's pretty boring, but uh, when you have relies on it, it's actually pretty exciting. Uh, Nick, yeah, nice. do you mind if I ask, um, in terms of security, what is your uh, preference plugins for security? Like, what do you use? Uh, for security, in terms of plugins? Uh, yeah, and I mean, like, uh, you said that you're running a dedicated server. Like, I'm probably more interested in uh, what plugins you use to protect WordPress and not so much what you use on a server. Okay. The, yeah, the, my go-to plugin is uh, WordFence. Um, I use it on all our sites. Um, and, and probably because I'm familiar with it, I've used it for two or three years now. Uh, but the other one which I think is equivalently good is the security plugin. Uh, so either security or web fence, I would go with both of those. Um, I've used both, and uh, both of them, I think, are of equal sort of value. But the important thing with it is, is, that, is uh, when you install web fence and security, don't just install it and turn it on. Actually configure it. There's a whole um, a whole page of configuration instructions. If you don't do it, it's, just, it's yeah. almost as good as not having it installed at all. So configure it. 
uh, there's really good documentation. So if you install the plugin, go to the documentation page, it will walk you through step by step all the configuration options. And hey, look, if you're not sure, put a message into WP Bosses in the um, in the Facebook page, um, or probably into your uh, page there with Divi Over, and I'm sure someone uh, will come through and you know I've got some uh, uh, suggestions and hints about how to set the thing up. Properly. Yeah, absolutely. I use WordFence as well, and um, I just tried, like, I had it on my to-do list to try Clef for a long time, but I actually haven't installed it until just on Monday, and I have to say, I love it. I love mm. how I can just log in with my phone, and it feels it feels quite secure. I'll see how I will go, but um, I really like this plugin. It's really interesting. Um, yeah, can I'm I just sure. mention another yeah. thing in terms of uh, security for blog posts? And I don't know, guys, if you, like, talked about it earlier or something, but... Um, what I noticed is if you uh, write a blog post on a, a WordPress site and then um, every blog has an author and if you click actually on the author page in the URL it will have um, the URL of your website uh, slash author and then after slash it will actually have your username so people who are um looking for your um username to log into your website all they have to do is click on the author page and uh, they will have your nickname not nickname the username in in a slack um in a url there so uh, one thing that i installed on a website for clients that do blogging is a little plugin called edit also also slug i know i pronounced it probably wrong and uh, it's free it's from wordpress.org uh, deposit uh, repository uh, takes almost nothing to install but it changes that um, you can actually pick what um, slug you want to have in a URL for your author so then it doesn't matter who looks at it they can't see your actual username yeah that's I, handy I, I don't know if I actually explained it clear enough but uh, yeah just uh, check out edit author slug uh, plugin and in the description you probably will understand what it is in your name. Yeah, no, I understand that that actually brings up another tip is um, don't use your administrator user to to write your blog posts. Um, yeah. Create a, a separate user, either just an author or or some other kind of lower level user um, to use for all your blogging and and everything else. That's a perfect Oops. Good point. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, Okay, I've got a uh, plugin from an Australian author. It's actually called Add From Server. Uh, it's a plugin by Dion Hulse. And, awesome plugin. Um, yeah, and what the plugin does is um, sometimes when you're on cheaper hosts or other shared hosts, um, you might have issues uploading larger files. They might have a, a cap of, say, you know, you can't upload anything over 2 meg. If you've got a larger image or a video or something, you can use um, you can use an FTP program to upload that file to your server, and and what this plugin does is uh, lets you browse files on your server, put them into your media library. Um, so yeah, you can um, check it out for more. Anyway, um, on to the topic. We're going to be talking with Olga and asking her lots of very personal questions. No, not really. No pressure. <laughs> um, um, this, I, you gave us a bit of an introduction before, but um, elaborate a bit on how you first got started with WordPress. Um, right. Uh... Um, I actually started with WordPress not that long ago, probably just about like almost four years. And um, a couple years ago, uh, actually almost close to three years ago, I, when I was trying all different WordPress themes, I came across Elegant Zim, um, uh, Elegant Zim company and the Zim Divi. And uh, actually that Zim kind of changed my, the way my business operates now, because um, I have to say lately, or majority of my sites that I build for my clients, I build with Divi. And Divi has, um, Elegant Zim has such a great community. There is lots of Divi groups. Uh, there is one really big group with, I believe it's over 20,000 people. And there is uh, one really friendly group, probably the best group out there called uh, Divi uh, and Extra Help and Share. 
it has just over 8,000 members probably, and I think Robbie, I think you are in there as well. And it's not just, like, you can join the group. Uh, people that doesn't just share DV stuff, they talk sometimes about all different things, hosting, um, design tips, everything. But uh, this is kind of my journey. Uh, I started with WordPress, tried lots of different themes, uh, spent lots of time on WordPress.org in a, a WordPress codex, learning everything, all the ditty gritty stuff. And um, actually, most of the things I learned from Linda.com as well, especially back when it was free. Like now, since Linda.com was, I think it was purchased by LinkedIn. Am, am I right? I'm, yeah. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah. But before it was purchased by LinkedIn, if you are a member of Central Queensland Library, you can log in into Linda for free. So that's why that's why I learned all my WordPress stuff from. And um, is it not free anymore? Is it? No, yeah, it's not free can. anymore. Since LinkedIn took over it, they closed that free account. Like I tried to look in a couple of times, but no, no, no. No. And now I, Microsoft no. owns LinkedIn. Pardon? And now Microsoft owns LinkedIn. Ah, okay. Well, yeah, I don't know I, if Microsoft. I think I logged into free. Linda a couple of weeks ago with my free Queensland account. Really? Okay, I'll yeah. have to try again. Yeah. Yeah. So when um. Before WordPress came along, did you were you still operating the same company, just with different software or a different theme? Or no, 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 no. Um, no, before I actually started um, building sites, I didn't do any anything to do with websites or web design. I was actually for a couple of years just was enjoying being a mom. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, always wanted to build um, websites even back when I like I call it now in my previous life um, in my previous life uh, originally I'm from Ukraine and when I was living in Ukraine I used to work for tax office and I worked in a computer department we were designing software for uh, tax office my part was actually designing software for audit so uh, when I was leaving my country and moving here I knew that I will have to start something different um, and uh, one of my friends, he was a web designer, and I really always enjoyed what he does and how he works and the websites that he makes. So I always think that that's what I want to do. And when I was living, I asked him, um, what should I learn, like what books should I buy? So when I come to Australia and I've got no job and such, I can just read the books and start learning, you know, about how to do websites. And he said, buy um, books about Java. So I've got big, thick books about JavaScript which every time over the years that I open, after about five pages, I was feeling like falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I still got a big book. It looks nothing interesting. Um, but yeah, when at some point when I was doing my blog and then my husband said, ah, he wants a blog if I can, you know, put it together, I started to look through different, different platforms to see which platform uh, looks friendly enough and um, easy enough for me to start learning about. And somehow WordPress just keep popping up everywhere. And so I gave it a go and I really liked it. So now I, I keep going with it. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Nice. So what um, Div is your favorite theme? And we talked about um, WordFence before for security. But do you have any other, um, do you have a, a toolbox, so to speak, of, of your favorite plugins that you like to install on every site? Um, yeah, I do. Uh, I try actually to use as least plugin as possible. So usually when I just put a website, the first thing that goes on is, you know, Akismet, uh, WordFence, um, what other things? Sorry, I'll just switch to my website <laughs> and see what I've got yeah. there. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, Clef now. Uh, I like to use formidable forms if I need to do forms. I know lots of people prefer gravity forms. Um, yeah, uh, for backing up uh, sites, I like to use Updraft Plus. I'm actually um, using quite a lot of free stuff. Uh, two of my Nothing favorite plugins that. that I don't use on every website, but I really do like them, is um, Slider Revolution and Essential Grid. Uh, <laughs> you can purchase them from Envato. I, I've got lots of um, licenses for those too. And um, they're just like, now that I know how they work and um, I work with them so, you know, I can set, it up, set them up very quickly. It actually became a really good tool that if, uh, if, if 
sorry, if clients want something fancy, like wants a fancy grade or something for a photographer website or for something else, uh, I just buy it and, um, you know, instead of sort of coding in a Zoom by myself or trying to match this grid, I can just do it with essential grid so much faster. And the same with Revolution Slider. If uh, I try not to encourage uh, clients to have a slider, but if client does want one, like really want one, and I can't talk them out of it, then, um, yeah, I like Revolution Slider. Yeah. It's really poppy, and that's usually what clients want. They say, oh, can you make something poppy and something moves? Yeah, Revolution Slide is very powerful these days. Yeah, it is, yeah. I know it has some bad uh, reputation in the past. Like, uh, I read a few articles where, um, yeah, it used, the websites used to get hugged because of Revolution Slider because they had some uh, um, not so perfect coding or something, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I think they fixed it all up, and, um, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I think because it is so... Um, so powerful these days, it can be a bit more complex to set up. So it's one of those things that if you're going to use it, you've got to use it a lot to get your head around it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But once you've got a hand on it and you know which settings means what and how, uh, yeah, what to do, it, it becomes easier, just like with everything. Practice, practice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, not even practice, yeah, repetition. Cool. Uh, sorry, guys. I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I have a question no. for you. Can can uh, I yeah, sure, Paul. Uh, change the subject, like away from Revolution Slider? Can we do that? Oh, can we pivot absolutely. to a, another question that I'm intrigued about? Um, so you're a, you're a mother, yes? How many kids do you? Have? Yeah. Oh, I've got two kids. I've got a um, son who is going to be in high school next year, and oh. I've got a nine-year-old daughter. Correct. Oh, nice. So, okay. So, how do you how do you juggle um, business and kids? How do you manage your time? Oh, you know, you're busy. Like, what, what? I am busy, and I am uh, terrible at managing my time. I have to say that. Yeah, not gonna lie. Um, Honesty. Basically, um, I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but this is what I actually have done for almost two years in a row. Uh, I wake up at four o'clock in the morning. I know for some people it's way too early, but uh, I am always been a morning person. So I wake up at four and uh, I give myself about an hour to catch up on conversation in Slack, in a Facebook, check emails. And then usually from about five to six thirty, I then try to either reply to clients or actually do a bit of a design work. And then from six thirty to nine, that's when I spend time with kids, you know, preparing them for school, getting them ready, getting lunch boxes ready, driving them to school, coming back. And then I've got the nine uh, nice five hours from nine to three where I've really tried to concentrate to get most of my job done. And uh, from three onwards, I can't really work because my kids got lots of sport in the afternoon. It's a bit crazy busy. So yeah, at three o'clock, I pretty much can sometimes turn off computer. <laughs> wow. And it's like they like to buy. <laughs> That's cool. That's yeah. epic. Cool. Yeah, I do try not to work on weekends uh, and spend time with kids and catch up with friends and on cleaning the house, obviously. But um, yeah, I have to, some days, some weekends, if it's a rainy day and there is not much to do, if I get into the office and I turn on the computer, I can actually spend half a day on weekend in front of the computer as well. But um, yeah, I don't mind it. Like it's, uh, I, I like to do what I do, so. That doesn't seem like a bad thing, like a show. Cool, awesome. Well done. Four o'clock. Uh, Tracy. Uh, Crazy. Four o'clock. <laughs> oh well, but I go to bed early as well. Tracy, are you a mom as well? Uh, sorry. Uh, Tracy, do you have kids? Ah uh, no, no kids for me. Oh, okay, so different um, timetable. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a morning person too. I like, I do my best work in the morning. Yeah, no, the same. Uh, low mornings, uh, I have to say, and I don't know if it's because I wake up early by, you know, say like now I can't really concentrate and I can't do much work, or if I will do something, I will not be productive. But uh, like really, in the morning, that's my most productive time. And then in the afternoon, I'm good for nothing. <laughs> 
No, I'm I'm the complete opposite. I think I'm most productive after five o'clock. Um, <laughs> when I know that I'm not going to get interrupted by emails or phone calls or anything, I can just put my headphones on, just chunk out a couple of hours and just usually it's it's between say eleven PM and about three AM is probably my most productive time. Three AM. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so do you listen to music when you work? Uh, yeah, when I can. What do you listen to? Uh, lots of different. I when I was when I was growing up, I used to be like into the punk rock kind of music. Um, these days, it's a bit more, bit more relaxed, like Bon Iver and William Fitzsimmons, and and just a, a bit more chill kind of music. Um, but yeah, but I'll I'll give anything a go. No, actually, I'm the same. Yeah, I don't have any preference. Like some days I would listen to something really heavy, and then some days I won't. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it varies. Yeah, anything goes some days. Yeah, that's why I like the Spotify playlists, like the mixes that they they create for you, like Roby's mix of the week or something. I just put that on, and the first five songs are usually yeah, that's that's pretty cool, and then it gets to something that they like a pop song from the radio, and then that's when I have to turn it off. Oh. Do, do you guys sing along as well with that? Sing while you're working? I, bet I, you I, use, I just tap the desk. I, I play drums, so I, I um, right. that's that's what I do. With a yeah. Table table drummer. Well, <laughs> well, do you? Yeah. Do I what? Do I sing uh, while I'm working? Yeah. Well. Usually I, I sort of work at the same time as Roby does and I don't really want to wait my family with my, um, with my beautiful voice. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but no, I don't. But yeah, I listen to classes. I, I like sort of the epic stuff, you know, the epic. Um, I don't know, if you go to YouTube and you just type in like epic instru instrumental music, just that real full-on, like, you know, heroic, like, running into a big battle with a big, massive axe or a sword or something. I feel like, you know, I feel like I'm sort of doing that with my design. Like, I'm just getting in there and conquering that work. Yes. It's like, like adventure like movie soundtracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And soundtracks as well. I really like soundtracks. So, <laughs> Lord of the Rings stuff. And, yeah, it's really cool. So, I'll hum. I'll do some humming. Nick, are you there? You keep popping in and out. Uh, I am here, but I've been here all the time. It just uh, keeps kicking me out. <laughs> what about oh. this? Well, well, while you are here, um, did you have any questions before you get kicked out again? I uh, probably have, but you've probably already asked Olga, and she's probably answered them all. <laughs> but um, I guess uh, the thing that uh, I'm curious about is... Uh, a lot of WordPress developers, it, it, well, there's two sorts that I noticed. Those that work in an agency and those that work at home. So uh, for someone like you, Olga, what's, what are the advantages and benefits do you find working from home as opposed to uh, having to trundle into uh, Brisbane every day? Apart from the distance. Well, uh, I think the reason I like to work the way I work now as a, just a freelancer with my own business is uh, flexibility like um yeah flexibility is really uh, number one with hours especially when it comes to uh kids school holidays if i would be working for agency then i would have to put kids in a daycare uh, center or not daycare sorry is that too big for daycare for vacation center i think it's called and uh it's just not what i want like i don't I'm a kind of mom that I like my kids to be with me and on school holidays, have a nice holiday time. I don't know. So yeah, the flexibility. If they are sick, I can stay at home with them and then just work around it or even work with them at home. Awesome. And I suppose uh, working from home too, uh, you, you're a moderator of the uh, Divi group. So um, I guess that allows you to uh, spend all hours of the uh, day and night, you know, two o'clock in the morning, answering <laughs> questions and uh, being in there, just sort of seeing, seeing what's happening. So tell us, what's it like being a moderator? Um, yeah, yeah, I am an uh, admin in a DV, Glaston, a DV Help and Share group. Um, I got invited. There is actually five or oh, 15 admins 
and we all spread around the globe so it's um a few of us from australia uh, well i think it's only two of us me and sarah there is a majority of them from usa and there is a few um the yeah, sjs in england and i don't even really know where other guys are from but they are spread around the globe so we can cover kind of all time zones between us and um I have to say the group um the way we set up rules and the way like uh, we basically if someone is not behaving the way they should uh, how to say or they're really negative we do try to kind of get rid of those people can i say that <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah well we don't get rid of anyone straight away but we like you know just um kind of refresh our rules and say hey guys like you know admin is here uh you know please uh be polite and you know uh, respond nicely to each other and uh, most people in the group actually uh, the group is really nice and really friendly and people just follow the rules and in a way the group kind of self-moderates itself there is a few people that if they see something um they can uh, report to us and we then uh, look into it and see if uh, we have to delete the post or we can just leave it um but it's not a big job and if i'm busy because it's so many of us like i don't sit in a facebook all day long because if i would facebook is such a time sucker really if i would sit in a facebook i would have nothing done <laughs> so i do go in and uh, yeah read comments and see what else is happening and you know if people coming in i approve like check them out quickly but uh yeah it's not a big job it's not something that um takes a lot of time or anything. I, so how, how did you get the job? I mean, how did you score such a, an auspicious role? Um, I got contacted by uh, admins who were admins. I think I only joined probably from about the beginning of the year, maybe February. So I haven't been admin there for too long. And yeah, they just contacted me and asked if I would like to join and be admin. And I said, oh, yeah, cool. I would. So had you been quite active on the forum before that, had you? Yeah, I used to be. I used to be quite active. And then, um, yeah, I'm not as active now. And not because I became admin and kind of, it just, um, this uh, last few months were really, really busy. So I'm definitely not as active, but uh, I still do go there. And um, sometimes if I feel that I need to comment on something, I comment. Like, are you guys in any groups? Like, I know Robbie is. I'm in roughly 100 groups. Well, <laughs> of course. Not moderators, though. I'm a, mo yeah, I'm a moderator of um, a couple of Puppies for Sale um, Facebook pages. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, they're, and they're going and they're going off like puppies for sale Perth. You should check it out. There's like seven thousand seven hundred likes. Even though, not that that really makes really it great, but um, yeah, it's pretty and they're pretty active and and puppies for sale Brisbane as well. So yeah, that's, oh, so that's I, I don't have dogs. I don't like them. So it's just funny. <laughs> So how did I, you get into it? Well, I started off. I started off a website a few years back, a WordPress site called Puppies for Sale Brisbane, because it was a high, like a relatively highly searched website, and um, it uh, yeah it got number one on, on on Google and stuff, and started getting traffic. But I had no people. Nobody, nobody was like selling dogs or anything, so it sort of um, wasn't really that great. And then Google came along and changed its algorithm and said no, no more to you know domain names that had the keywords in them and then my site pretty much just disappeared but I, I had the pages still just rolling and they've just been yeah generating likes for forever so it's like a snowball thing um, anyway it's not about me it's about you Olga I mean, can I get a dog off you? sorry? can I get a puppy dog off you? can you get a, do a dog off me? a puppy? Yes, yes. We want a puppy. I would just, yeah, just go to the Puppies for Sale Brisbane page and put up awesome. a request. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Ask nicely, though. Ask nicely, because I'm moderating. <laughs> that was the great ask request. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, sorry. I, I took the stage on that one. So, 
Do you want me to ask my last question? Go Please. for it. Yeah? Um, okay, my last question to you, Olga. Are you ready? Are you sitting oh down? <laughs> so it's actually a couple of questions in one question. That doesn't make sense. Um, so how do, you, how do you find your clients? And, or, or actually, yeah, how do you find your clients? How do you market yourself? Um, are, are they national or are they just locally? Um, okay, I'm horrible at marketing. Um, but I do, most of my clients are local clients. And uh, most of the clients come to me by referral. So my very, very first client three years ago was a tennis club where I play tennis. Like I was playing tennis and then the uh, manager, yeah, he said, oh, you know, we need a website. So I built a website. That was actually my very first client that I was, a, a, um, you know, was a paid job. And then from there, there was another guy who also played tennis that found out that I build websites and it kind of basically it snowballed from there. So now people, of course, not find me, finding me through tennis club. Uh, they find me through everything. But yeah, I've got a nice group of friends that don't mind telling other people what I do. And um, people who've got website built by me, uh, they tell other businesses. Basically, it's a small town and uh, we have quite a few business groups um, different business groups where business people come and you know for breakfast and uh, workshops and such so sometimes i go to those and always give my business cards uh, basically yeah, i go i try to go to as many market um not marketing what they call it like when Working. businesses get together kind of yeah work events, yeah. yeah 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 as many as i can and to be honest i haven't been to too many because apparently i just can't <laughs> to go to too many but uh, they've been really good. And uh, one client that I've got right now, I actually just met her at breakfast at the, um, yeah, uh, when we had kind of just a breakfast with all the different business people. And uh, yeah, she gave me a call a couple of days later and said that yes, they need, we um, they need a website. So going to local things works for me, uh, definitely. I have only a couple international clients and I do believe that they probably found me through Facebook groups like Divi group or other otherwise I would have no clue how else they would I mean one client I know for sure found me through the Facebook group another one not quite sure because I did actually google his name in a Facebook group and he didn't come up so a bit of a mystery yeah. cool okay yeah but when I mean local I don't mean just Gladstone I mean actually kind of central Queensland like uh, I built a few uh, websites for people in Rockhampton and so basically yeah, just Gladstone and a little bit of surrounding area. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Very good. Yeah. Did I answer that <laughs> all right? Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, so local it business. Is, um... Someone's puppy is hungry. Yeah, let's have a puppy across the road there. That's why I want another puppy to go and sort of uh, yeah. point out and stop the all that noise. <laughs> <laughs> if there's no more uh, questions, that might be a good place to wrap it up. Thank you very much for um, coming along, Olga, and answering all of our questions. Oh, you are welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, really stoked actually when I got a message from Nick. <laughs> awesome. Mm. Very cool. Any last words? Yeah. Uh, this, was, this was just a chance to just... with Olga at um, the after function at uh, WordPress Sydney. Yes, we did. And Nick, I actually did yeah. see you. Uh, I met Nick, well, I haven't met him, but I did see him on Sunshine Coast WordCamp. And I have been to your presentation, Nick. But I don't uh, think we. Uh, talked afterwards. So yeah, the Sydney was the first one when we actually met. That's right. It was a good good work camp too. Awesome work camp. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that after party was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it was, wasn't it? You can remember. Oh, yeah, the best part. <laughs> <laughs> and for those guys at Flywheel watching, I'm wearing my uh, Flywheel t-shirt that we got from work camp. Those guys rock too. Oh, perfect. <laughs> That's a nice color. I didn't get one of those. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. Let's say goodbye. Yeah, it was nice to meet all of you guys. You too. Hey, very nice to meet you again. Nice yes. to meet you, Olga. Yeah, nice to meet you, Paul. Okay. Yeah. See ya. Yeah, see you. Bye. 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 Who's still alive? <laughs> <laughs> Who's still alive? I, I pressed the stop who, button. Who is turning off this line? Are we going to be alive or not?